Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Jenna's Path. So, the last place we left off was we were at the diner with Jenna and she was delving into uh, Chase's personal life. So, let's see where that goes today, shall we? Anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. And let's dive right into it. Start up Alarm Chan. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. <clears throat> now I'm starting to get a little embarrassed. Whether TJ is more appalled or not, I can't tell since he's got his face buried in his paws. I don't... Maybe... I don't know. Just curious. I'm just wondering why I didn't pick up on this about you before. Jenna grins and looks out the window. I noticed then with the way the sunset is lighting up the diner, how pretty her eyes are. It almost looks unnatural the way they glow. Yeah, her eyes are quite uh, alluring. So, I need to ask you a favor, Chase. I stiffen, wondering what the hell it might be after that conversation. I'm wondering if you could drive me to the mall. I want to get a few things. She's got you taking her to the mall? Oh yeah, she's your girlfriend. Yep. Oh sure, what do you need? Jenna hesitates, and for the first time today, she's the one that seems embarrassed. Well, you know in Pueblo we don't exactly have a great comic book shop, even though it's huge. Oh yeah? I wouldn't really know, I never did go to that section of the mall. What's especially what's especially lacking is the manga sex is the manga selection. Holy fuck, she likes manga. Oh yes, gimme. I smile. God, if I could find a girl who likes manga. Well, there's a lot of them, <laughs> but they're so hard to find ones find ones that are single. I'd forgotten I'd forgotten the way the I'd forgotten the way that after getting her first job, I drive Jenna to the mall once a week and she'd buy her favorite manga. Jenna's still not looking at me, but I grin. Yeah, it'll be just like when we were in high school. Have you been keeping up on all those series? I remember being amazed at how much material was in those books compared to the comics, even if they weren't colored. Jenna looks back at me, and I can see that she's a little relieved. Did she think I was going to make fun of her for it? I keep up with it online, mostly. This is more for old time's sake. Believe it or not, that mall has some of the happiest memories I have of this place, aside from Leo's house. Of course I'd believe that. I guess there are a few special edition volumes I want to get that they might have. I was always surprised with what they were able to bring in. Well, that's cool. You know, I watched an anime since I last saw you. Oh, really? What was it? Uh, I can't really remember. Uh, it, Ichiro, it was a long title, but it was uh, about this old wolf guy that becomes a samurai. Ah, hell. Ichiro Hienonuro? I think that's as close as I can get it. She says it quickly with what sounds to me like a perfect accent. Maybe? That sounds about right. Jenna makes a face like she swallowed a lemon. It is. It's the only old wolf samurai show I know. You gotta watch some of the older stuff. Anime these days is just, you know. Uh, no. Well, we need to do that, too. One of these nights, we're gonna watch a marathon of, Gib of Gambit Nay. The hotel Wi-Fi is good enough for it, I think. It's got this sort of western-style medieval atmosphere to it. I mean, western? But western as in the Old West, and then also medieval. <laughs> well, which one is it? I never really watched anime, even if itchy, whatever it was, wasn't that bad. The idea of staying up late with Jenna watching old foreign cartoons sounds like a lot of fun. <sighs> it's hard for the ons, guys. I did just get up. Want to wanna join us, TJ? TJ looks up from his phone. Huh? What? Do you want to watch anime with us? Uh, sure, why not? One second, guys. Okay, gotta clear allergies. Hey, no phones! I tease him, reaching for it to take it from him. I thought it was only for the hike! I glance over the screen, expecting to see some Christian school group or something, but instead it's a text thread from Leo. Yo, Tease, where you at? Hi, Leo, we're hiking. You going somewhere after that? Yeah, Leo, you're being creepy. Yeah, the diner. Do you want to meet us there? Is Chase going too? Yeah, he's here. Are you reading my texts? That's really rude. I look up at TJ, who's glaring at me from across the table. Mm. I look back down at the phone. All right, on my way. Leo's coming? 
Yep, he's been messaging me all day. Jenna and I look at each other, both of our brows raised. What? But that's when Leo's van pulls in front of the diner and I hear Jenna sigh loudly. Leo's bulky form bounces out of the truck, doing a little jog up to the diner. The bell to the, the, bell to the door rings as Leo walks in, all smiles. Hey, Leo! DJ. Leo immediately squeezes into the booth next to me, almost sandwiching me between him and the window. Chase, what's up? He wraps a big arm around my neck and yanks me roughly into a hug, forcing a little squeak out of my throat. Okay, you know what? After playing through the game the first time, what he's doing now is actually very creepy. <laughs> See, this is how it should be. We came here to hang out, not break up into little groups and fight. That was Flynn's fault. Jenna says it quietly, eyeing Leo's arm around my neck. Yeah, well, I'm gonna get him to apologize. Things take a little bit of time, you know? Jenna doesn't say anything. Instead, choosing to look over the menu, even though we're already, we've already ordered. You have fun hiking? Leo turns his goofy tongue-out smile on me. I'm about to answer, but that's when his face changes and I see his nose twitching. You smell like a girl. His head snaps to Jenna, and it's instantly obvious as to what he's thinking. <laughs> Jenna, who's looking up now, just smiles sweetly, not trying to explain the situation at all. Leo tenses up, arm tightening around my neck, almost choking me. I forgot my musk stuff, so Jenna lent me hers. Leo looks back at me, and I can tell he's trying to decide whether or not to believe me. TJ, though, for once, chimes in with something useful, cheerfully unaware. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Sorry, Chase. He looks at me apologetically, but honestly, I could kiss him right now. Leo relaxes a little, but his ears are still pointed straight up, a sure sign that he's still tense. Alright, well, next time you go, I'm coming too. Anyway, I'm planning Carl's birthday party tomorrow. What? That's like a month away. Yeah, well, there's not much else to do. Jenna leans back in her seat and folds her ears down. That's really short notice, Leo. Couldn't you have told us this before we came so we could prepare? Well, I was planning to do that today, but you guys just took off without telling me. I don't have a gift. <clears throat> Leo rubs his face. We've still got time to do that. I just wanted to tell you what's up. We chat for a while longer, then we get our food. Leo orders a milkshake and hangs out with us the whole time. Usually I would love to have Leo around, but something about this feels forced and awkward, and Jenna's gone pretty quiet. Leo doesn't, doesn't, Leo doesn't let go of my neck the entire time. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Party, 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 we're gonna have a party. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey. He clutches a cell phone. The screen shattered and the metallic innards exposed. No texting. Let's talk. But I can't. Have you decided on what you're gonna do after school? Don't worry about it right now. I've still got a few months to decide. Going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Despite being shattered, the phone in his hand lights up. I see something flash on the screen. Hey boy, where are you at? What the hell is this from? Miss you. Ooh, this is fucking... Cold. This is weird. Oh, God, this is weird. Uh, answer? Oh, no. Ah, fuck! I find myself panting, sitting upright in the bed of our motel room. My phone is vibrating against the nightstand. Reaching over, I grab and hit the answer button. My eyes still too hazy to blah. My eyes still too hazy with sleep to read the caller ID. Hello. Hey. I catch the distinctive baritone rumble on the other end. L Leo. That's me. You. You just waking up? I thought you were gonna film for your project before we hit the mall. Squinting at the screen of my phone, I see that it's 9:02 a.m. Additionally, I realize that Jenna is staring at me from her bed, the covers up to her chest and her laptop in her lap. The sound of running water must mean that TJ's in the bathroom taking one of his legendarily long showers. 
I'm on spring break. I'm not really imposing too strict of a schedule on myself. I yawn, trying to snap my focus fully back into reality. Despite having slept for at least ten hours, I don't feel rested at all. That's because you slept for ten hours. You probably woke up during a dream... Yeah, you woke up during a dream cycle. <laughs> Lazy otter. <laughs> Alright, I just called to let you college kids know it'll be. I'll be at the motel in about ten minutes. Great. What? Nothing. Jace. What? I'm hanging up now. I need to put on some clothes. I'll see you. I set my phone down back on the nightstand and slide out of bed. Still rubbing my eyes a bit, I dig through my duffel bag for a decent outfit. As I pull out a pair of khaki cargo shorts, I hear Jenna clear her throat. You're still dealing with sleep paralysis? Huh? You woke up swearing pretty loudly. I'm surprised TJ didn't leap from his shower to check up on you. I feel a twinge of embarrassment. Oh. It wasn't paralysis this time, just regular bad dreams and such. Also, with L also Leo will be here in ten minutes, so you might want to get dressed. Hmm. I see her type something quickly upon her laptop before shutting it. She slides out of sight beneath the nightstand. I guess she doesn't trust the cleaning staff. Not in this town. <laughs> Do you still see a therapist? Nah, I'm not sure the one in Peyton helped, and you know how things are at Pueblo. Everybody's got a mental disorder or something. It's trendy and it only takes you seriously. That's just the stuff that Leo says. They have free counseling services available running out of the psychology department. You don't pay it all that you don't pay all that tuition money for nothing. You might as well use it. Well, do you go? I slide on an old t shirt with a Southwestern Adventures point printed on the front, the red eye the red dye having faded to pink at this point. No. But I don't suffer from hallucinations, sleep paralysis, or night terrors. Please tell me you're at least still taking your medication. None of that none of that helps, so no. Chase I catch the look she gives me. It's different from her usual almost paternal style, paternal stare. Her brow is lifted and she seems more than just concerned, a glimmer of worry present upon her face. I find myself turning away from her abruptly, as if I had seen something I shouldn't have. Trying to keep myself busy with something, I take a bagel from our little communal snacks from our little communal sack of food on the table, eating it over a napkin. I can hear TJ at this point trying to dry himself off in the bathroom with the cheap motel dryer. It isn't exactly a full body machine like the ones back in Pueblo, so it takes forever. Especially someone furred like TJ. He turns into a damn poof ball after a minute in one of those things. Meanwhile, Jenna busies herself with getting dressed behind me. I don't know why this feels so awkward. Usually Jenna is the one person who I can speak with and not worry about this sort of thing. Ah, oh, hell. Mm -hmm. Wolf Boy is here. Just a minute. I step over toward the bathroom door. Hey, TJ, Leo is at the door. Hurry up if you can. What? Leo is at the door! Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'll hurry. Glancing over, I see the door handle jiggle. It's still locked. God, that's creepy. Here's Leo! Not very patient, is he? He never was. The knocking continues, and I hear Jenna sigh. She moves from the corner of her bed to the door, unlocking and opening it. It is at this point I realize she isn't fully dressed yet, her body covered only by a pair of bra and panties. Leo starts to say something, but the words visibly catch in his throat as he realizes Jenna's state of undress. His jowls visibly thin along the contours of his muzzle, his auburn eyes flick flicking briefly to me, then back to the fennec in front of him. You said you'd be here at 9.30, Leo. What's your problem? Leo blinks. What is my problem? Why are you naked? Because you wouldn't stop pounding on the door, and I didn't want to deal with the creepy guy at the front desk yelling at us. Now wait outside. Like Chase said, just a minute. Poochie. Jenna shuts the door. <laughs> <laughs> I stare at awestruck, Jenna moving back to her suitcase of clothes and rifling through it. Oh, hey. Looking pretty good there. Chase, you want to bring that snack bag with us to the mall? I think I have some peanut butter pretzels in there. It takes her only a moment for her to slip on her familiar black tank top and shorts. 
She sits back on the edge of the bed, taking a small comb from one of the drawers and grooming her head for it, despite the fact it looks perfectly looks perfect already. TJ emerges from the bathroom, his fur not adequately combed and giving him a sort of lion's mane look that usually only punk guys go for. I smirk a little as I grab up the bag of food, TJ frowning at me self-consciously. I thought we were in a hurry. It's alright, TJ, don't worry, there's no need to rush. Don't we have to get Carl all his birthday stuff before the party this afternoon, though? Yes, but this is Carl we're talking about. He doesn't wake up until mid-afternoon. If we show up too early, he'll be too groggy to realize what's happening. That's true. I'm not really sure how I feel about the whole early surprise party idea anyway. But it does give us an excuse to check out the comic book store at the mall, yeah? I want to visit the music store. There's a new Cherry Bloom album out, and I'd like a physical copy. He pauses, TJ seeming to be in the midst of trying to push down his excess floof. If we have time, I mean... Jenna nods, picking up her phone and purse before heading to the door. We follow. Coffee time! Hey yo, it's coffee time, it's coffee time, why don't you try some coffee of mine? All I'm saying is that it's real stupid that you all drive all the way back here just to hang out with each other alone. Even Carl and Flynn are sticking together by themselves, eh? You all can do that when you three are not, at, when you three are not on break. Leo stares ahead, poking his tongue against the side of his cheek, eyes squinted against the rising sun. His lecture is answered with resounding silence. Even TJ doesn't chime in. He clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth. This is primarily due to Flynn's behavior, you know. Pfft! You should put your pride aside. Really? Oh, God. I see TJ slide down in the back seat. Leo insists I say shotgun, so I can't really hide as well. I'm saying that even if you don't like Flynn a whole lot right now, he wins if you can't fucking get over his tantrums. Flynn wins if we continue to put up with his awfulness. He's older than all of us and still acts like a child. He needs to apologize to become aware that his actions have consequences. Ignoring the problem like it isn't there, like it isn't there helps no one. That mindset is why I had you speak to Chase early on. Oh, God. You sure are insistent on that, aren't you? Sound like you got an agenda or something. I see the wolf glances sidelong toward me, his expression briefly softening. Why would I have an agenda to separate you and Chase? He's 21. He can make the decision on his own. I just didn't want to have to deal with you two prancing around it the whole time. Wouldn't be the first time, girly. TJ is practically on the floor at this point. He's so far down in his seat. Leo glances over at me again. I can tell my lack of response is starting to put him on edge. Honestly, though, I have no idea what to say. You two have decided on your relationship status, right? It's been years and you're still wearing that bracelet. Come on, let's not have this talk while we're all trapped in a vehicle for the next 30 minutes. Don't worry, Otter, I'm not going to drive us over the guardrail or something. At this point, that might be preferable to continuing this conversation. Another silence follows, and I can feel Jenna's expectant stare upon the back of my neck. Finally, Leo speaks. I'm gonna put on some music, yeah? Any preferences? We don't get it. We don't get any stations but the hillbilly cavalcade ones between Echo and Peyton. Well, I've got a CD here. My curiosity peaks. I see Leo look back toward me, then nod to the glove box with a smirk tugging at the corner of his muzzle. I think I know exactly what CD he's thinking of. I pull the little clasp on the dashboard. Instead of a CD, a slew of balled up napkins fall into my lap. I don't think much of it until I spy the mostly empty bottle of water-based lube sitting in the glove box. Oh my god, why would you store those in there? Oh no, oh no, I am so full of cringe right now. <laughs> oh, gross, ah! Leo looks over and his eyes go wide. Puta madre, I fuck. He makes a sound somewhere between a sigh and a nervous laughter. I forgot about that. Jenna cranes her head to see what the fuss is about. She lets out an amused grunt. That's nothing you even had your hands on before, Chase. Ah! Uh, his ears seem downright flushed at this point, pinned to the side of his head. <laughs> Context is key, as they say, yeah? Don't worry, guys. There's a trash thingy back here. TJ unbuckles and reaches forward, collecting at least nine balled-up tissues in his paws. Oh, TJ! We all look on in horror. TJ, put those down! He 
Sure is empty. It is Wednesday morning. You're like the only car in the back in the back parking lot, though. Kind of spooky. I ain't afraid of no parking lot. Leo smiles, looking back at us as if waiting for applause. The only thing that scares me anymore is college debt. Makes me glad I'm not going to college, then. No, I don't say that. I catch up and walk alongside the others. It's strange seeing all these parking spaces completely unused. Why not? Oh. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Alright, guys. That's been a new episode of Echo Jenna's Path. We got a little eye full of uh, Jenna today. Hope, uh, too bad she wasn't in a good mood for it. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!